Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to Fenway Park. This is Mark Fidrich. Now, each time he gets the ball back, you'll see him mumble a couple of words to the ball. The first man ever to pitch five career no-hitters. That's your ball, Joe. I don't believe what I just saw. That's another chance for Mitchell, and he makes a pair-handed catch. Ricky goes, a pitch pick, and he's going to have it. Leaps high of the air, and he's got it. Oh, incredible let it be said that number eight, Cal Ripken Jr., has reached the unreachable star. Today, Today I, consider I consider myself the luckiest, the luckiest man, man on the face, on of, the the face of the earth. Now, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we invite you to rise. We invite you to rise. Hey folks, I want to thank you for joining me today on the Daily Rewind, brought to you by ThisDayInBaseball.com, and I'm your Tom Hannon, and I'm your host. And I just uh, want to tell you that if you're looking for something to do that is not related to this uh, news pandemic cycle that we're all in, and we're all concerned, and it's a definitely a uh, scary time, you know, you could go over to thisdayinbaseball.com and just get lost in baseball history. Um, today's date is March 19th, and for every date, we have events that happened. So, for example, uh, there's over a hundred different events that happened on March 19th in this on this day in baseball history. There's births, there's passings, there's special events. So you could every day is represented. So you you have a specific date. Maybe you're looking for an All Star game or a World Series. Uh, there's over 60,000 different events on the site. Uh, it is a work in progress. Uh, not every player page is developed yet, but you know we're working towards it, and we're trying to give you this great content and curate it for you so you can enjoy it. So uh, on today, today is, as I mentioned earlier, is March 19th. March 19th in 1927, Don Richard Ashburn, known as Richie, is born in Tilden, Nebraska. He will become a five-time All-Star, and of course, he was a great center fielder and a solid hitter for the Phillies. He's going to hit over 300 during nine of his 15 big league seasons. And he twice captured the National League batting title and concluded his career with a 308 lifetime average. Following his playing career, he will call Phillies games for more than three decades. Ashburn will eventually be elected into the Hall of Fame by a special veterans committee in 1995. Now, I got a little treat for you. Here is Richie Ashburn on the Tops Sports Radio Network way back in the 1950s before he ever became a actual broadcaster. Your food tastes a lot better when you're winning. You sleep a lot better, and generally you're just in a much better frame of mind. That was the voice of Richie Ashburn, a lifetime 300 hitter in the majors and one of the game's outstanding hustlers. And this is Tops in Sports, a production of the United States Air Force. This is Kyle Rote. Today we'll be talking with Richie Ashburn, who for 15 years has distinguished himself in the National League. But first, this important announcement. On the aerospace team, there's a place for tomorrow's leaders. From Jersey City, New Jersey, Sergeant John Layton says... I think it's important that a young man receive training and experience in a technical field. Since being in the Air Force, I've had the opportunity to become a jet engine technician. I think it's great. If you aim to be a leader tomorrow, see your Air Force recruiter today. Richie Ashburn was one of the original whiz kids who captivated the National League in 1950. And now, more than a dozen years later, he's still with us. Richie, you've been with winners and you've been with losers. Which is better? Well, Kyle, there's no doubt that uh, playing for a winner is, uh, is the greatest, uh, or a lot better than playing for a loser. In fact, your food tastes a lot better when you're winning, you sleep a lot better, and generally you're just in a much better frame of mind. Well, Richie, you've also played during your long and varied career for various types of managers. Can you tell us how managers differ? I played for many managers. Uh, I think uh, I have found... Uh, that the managers that I've liked best are the managers from what we call the older school, uh, Eddie Sawyer type, Charlie Grimm type. Those fellows would uh, pick out their best players. They didn't platoon very much. 
Uh, they'd pick out their best seven or eight men and uh, give them the ball and put them on the field and then and let and let the players go ahead and try to win the game. I played for a completely a different system when I was in Chicago they had the, this their coaching system of the multiple coaches we didn't have any manager at all uh, they did appoint a head coach and uh, he might coach a week and then another fellow might coach a week and this was a, a very unusual system well what did you find wrong with that multiple coach system the system uh, left a lot to be desired Kyle because of the fact that uh, you did have a different boss about every other week and uh, Mr. Wrigley was tired of firing managers and he wanted to set up sort of a board to run the club. And and I think in baseball you definitely have to have uh, one guy you can look to to respect for, respect and for uh, definitely for some kind of leadership. Well, I think that was proven in the standings, Richie, when this fine collection of talent finished ninth with only the New York Mets behind them. And another thing, the system seems to go contrary to human nature players seem to root against the head coach who doesn't use them in hopes he'll be replaced. You do because you have uh, six or seven players out of the roster like myself who were being rotated by these coaches and it's an unhealthy situation when you get a ball club and you, you're, you're rooting against some guys and uh, I, even, I even had the feeling that maybe even some of the coaches were rooting against each other. It's a competitive thing, you know. I know if I were a coach competing in that, I would I would li like to do better than the other fella. Well, it'll be interesting to see what happens there next season, Richie. And we'll be watching for you to carry on, too. Thanks very much for talking with us. Thank you, Kyle. That was Richie Ashburn, fans. And this has been Tops in Sports, brought to you by the United States Air Force. This is Kyle Rowe. Tops and Sports is written by Dick Young and produced by Brad Simpson for the United States Air Force in cooperation with this station. They took the blue from the skies and the pretty girl's eyes and a touch of old glory's hue and gave it to the men who proudly wear the U.S. Air Force blue. hope you enjoyed that interview from Topps Sports Radio Network. And if you're interested in learning more about Richie Ashburn, go on over to thisdayinbaseball.com. You can go to Richie Ashburn's page, or you could search, just search his name, and you're going to see many different events that happened during his career. And I, again, want to thank you for joining us today. And I know a lot of your baseball friends are looking for things to do. So please tell them about the show. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss uh, content as we're putting it out. And by all means, we appreciate any reviews, any feedback you can give us. You can reach me directly at tdinbb at gmail.com. That comes directly to me. Uh, and again, I'm Tom Hannon. I'm your host. And I really appreciate you being with me today. And I hope you enjoyed the show. You know, thanks again. And although I won't be seeing you at the ballpark in a few weeks like, you know, we'd all hoped, we'll see you there sooner rather than later. I'm out for today. I hope you enjoyed the show. Peace.